Kalayaruman we are going to learn electrostatic charge and fits. So start this topic we should have some clarification about the topic or basic information about the topic. Not in detail but little bit we should have it. So let's begin to understand how the syllabus is divided in divided into two sections. Which syllabus? QC second year physics syllabus. The these are the two sections electromagnetism and modern physics. In electromagnetism, further two sections are there. One is electrostatic and another is electrodynamics. In modern physics, there are different sections, but right now we are not going to deep into that. So just ignore for this moment modern physics. Now let's focus on this electromagnetism. So this electromagnetism is, is only study of an electromagnetic field, electromagnetic, electric and magnetic field combination. So again it is divided into two sections, electrostatics. Now the word if you split electro and statics. So electro is actually meaning is electron which is which the word is derived from the Greek letter and statics means it is a rest. So when the electron is rest or that time it is a study or the study of a charge uh, okay electrons at the rest and electrodynamics means when the electron is in motion that motion causes some phenomenon sign, some changes in the system. So that study is called electrodynamics. Now let's see, in electrostatics, which topics we are going to use. The first topic, electric charge and fits. Second topic is electrostatic potential and capacitance. And in electrodynamics, five topics are there. The first topic comes current electricity, second comes moving charges and magnetism and the fifth topic becomes a magnetism and magnet. And the sixth topic electromagnetic induction and the last one alternative current. If you see the electrostatics, in these two topics only we are studying the basic properties and phenomenons because of electric charge. When the charge or the electron is at the rest. Now come to this second section electrodynamics. The third topic itself says current electricity. The meaning of the current is a flow of something. Now here the flow of the electrons is a electric current, uh, current electricity. Now the fourth topic. The four topic tells directly it is about the motion of a charged particle and because of that a magnetism phenomenon of of C. The fifth topic tells about the magnetism because of a naturally produced matter or substance or material. And the sixth topic tells the electromagnetism can be induced. And the seven topics tells about the electric alternating current. Okay, let's start our first topic. The topic title itself says it is study of an electric charge and its field property. Now, what do we mean by electric charge? Electric charge is a property. It is not a kind or an object or entity. It is an property. So it is a property. Due to that property of a matter, it experiences an electric force from another matter, that's it. That force may be repulsive, may be attractive, but there is an interaction and that is because of this property and that property is known as electric charge. Now, this property of a matter so intrinsic means further cannot be studied or it is a by property. 
Now, what is exactly matter here? So, matter may be electrons, may be protons, may be alpha particles, may be beta particles, may be positive ions, may be negative ions, may be molecules, particles, any which has or which possesses this property, electric property. But remember, neutron and photon do not possess this property because those are electrical neutral, they don't have any charge, they do not experience any charge, uh, electricity force. Now, this property is, is a scalar quantity, its unit is Coulomb. Now, the, because of electric in, uh, electrostatic force, the interaction shows two types. One is repulsion and attraction. So, basic logic of repulsion is the reason what there must be the same kind of matter which are having same charge on them, same kind of charge, not they may be having different magnitude of same magnitude, but kind is may be same. And when they are attracting each other to matters, then the property must be different. Both matter must have the different property. property. Because of that reason, they are attracting. So, this results into two types of charges. Positive charge and negative charge. This property, positive and negative charge of property of a particle is known as polarity of a charge. Now, this property has a basic fundamental, this electric charge has a basic fundamental properties. Remember, only three basic or fundamental properties are there. The first one of its kind is additivity of a charge. Meaning of additivity of charge means in a system, there are number of charges. But the total charge on that system can be calculated, can be measured by adding by doing algebraic method uh, sum of all charges so we can find out the total charge that's total charge on the system is algebraic sum of all charges present on the system is known as identity of charges for example there are total five charges on the system so look at the charges plus one plus two minus three minus uh, plus four and minus five how many charges one two three four five charges among 5, 3 are positive charges, 2 are negative in a system. And the unit of that charges is not concerned right now. It is not important right now. Because we are just adding. And addition is done when they are having same unit. Because we have learned this in PUC first year, 11th standard from second topics. Measurement. And units. The addition or subtraction can be done when there is a the variables has same unit. Now the total magnitude of the charge of the system is by this property. Check out one plus two plus my, uh, plus minus three plus four and minus five. So check out how much minus three minus five. That is total minus eight. And 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 4, 7. So minus 8 and 7, the total addition becomes minus 2. So this is what total charge on the system. Look at the maximum positive charge is 4 and maximum, uh, maximum negative charge is 5. Even though the total charge of the system is minus 2. Now, second property is charge is conserved. The meaning of this charge cannot be created nor be destroyed. But nature sometimes produces a charge. For example, for example, neutron turns into a proton and electron. So proton carries a positive charge and electron carries a negative charge. Remember, proton is not a duplicate of electron. Why? Because proton mass is different than electron. 
So electron is this copy or a duplicate of electron is a positron. Now well, let's see. So the, these are produced in a nuclear reaction by turning neutron into these two points by dividing neutron into proton and electron. Now this is system has a single charge, single particle which is divided into two particles. Now this particle does not have any charge, so charge of that system in that nucleus is a zero. After producing the charge on these two particles, uh, after converting neutron into proton and electron, the charge of the system again zero. Let's see how. So these are produced after conversion of neutron. A proton carries a positive charge is exactly equal with electron. So it have equal and opposite charges. Because now total charge is how much? Zero. Before, because neutron is neutrally and uh, do not carry any charge. After, plus one, minus one. So total zero charge on the system. That's why this is except two cases. But actually the charge cannot be created. Now we understand. Even if you look in the another way of this case, it is just converted. It is not created. Neutron is converted into two part. Okay. You will realize, and one more thing I would like to explain here, I would like to tell you that you will realize this electron is nothing but beta negative particle. You will come across this part, this point in the nucleus topic. Okay, last property of the charge, quantization of charge. So we now we know understand, I hope you all understand this, charge is what. Now what is the exactly basic value of charge? Because cannot die, charge cannot be created, not be destroyed. So it must have a basic value. So that basic value is experimentally found. It is equal to 1.602192 into 10 raised to minus 19 Coulomb. Now for mathematical purpose we choose 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 Coulomb. For mathematical purpose. Now it is and it is represented by E. Thus if A a single charge means this value or basic value of a charge is this much. If you want to find the number of a total charge or number of charges on the system, this Q will help you. So total charge on the system that is Q is equal to N into E. So what is N? Number of this basic charges. Suppose 4 E are there, 4 into E. So 4 into this value, 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 10. So 16 fours are 64. So that is 6.4 into 10 raised to minus 19 Coulomb on a charge. That is total charge. So plus if it is a positive charge, minus if it is a negative charge. That's it. Now there are about 6.25 into 10 raised to 18 electrons in a charge of one coulomb. Why we are calculating this? Because one coulomb charge never found or never come across. Or because it is a very large value of a charge that is one coulomb. Now one coulomb charge carries how many electrons that can be calculated by the same formula. Okay, let's calculate this calculation. Now here is the formula. What we are calculating? The total number of electrons in one coulomb. That's already calculated. That's given value. Let's see how using this formula. So Q is on left side. We are going to calculate the N. So keep the N as same place. Just take this E to the left side. So Q divided by E which Q is made. 1 divided by 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19. Now 1 divided by 1.6 means it will give me 0 0.625. You can calculate by using calculator or anything you have. Now 
take this 10 raised to minus 2 the numerator it will become plus 90 and I will rearrange this value to this that is 6.25 into 10 raised to 80. So this much electrons are present you know how many coulomb? One coulomb. Remember one mass question will be asked this. So how many number of electrons in 4 nano coulomb or 5 coulomb or 1.6 coulomb they may ask purposely this number because 1.6 divided by 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 90. So this will give me 1 into 10 raised to 19 number of electrons. Remember this one. Okay. Let's move on to the next property. So, sorry, this is the end of the properties. Remember this calculation. Now, some physical properties of the electric charge are there. Like this one. Like charges means positive positive or negative negative charge. Like means similar kind or same charges. Positive or positive and positive. Or negative and negative. Repel each other. And unlike means different kind charges, positive and negative attract each other. Remember, this is not a fundamental property as per latest valuation scheme. Now, charge has only magnitude but do not have the direction. Means it is a scalar. I just explained earlier because it is a property. It is not a thing to exp uh, thing. It is a, not an object or it is a, not a matter. It is a property of a matter. Now, invariance of electric charge means what? The motion of a charge cannot change its any property. So that's why the invariance charge is unaffected by motion. Now, so as per syllabus, the next point is gold leaf electroscope. Now, what is gold leaf electroscope? So it is a electroscope. Let's understand what is electroscope. Electroscope is a device which detect the presence of a charge or the type of charge, maybe type of new charge means positive or negative. So that instrument is called electroscope. Electroscope is a device used to detect a type of electric charge and one of its kind is, is gold leaf electroscope. Remember this name because they may ask for one marks, gold leaf electroscope.
now the next point comes is a types of substance so actually the substance are divide, classified many 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 times many ways depend on the nature of study or for basic of study base of the study so here the base of the study is the flow of a charge so charge in the sense actually we here they are considering the motion of a electron in the substance now look at this conductor so the substance which allows the passage of electricity means passage of electrons through them easily are called conductors so conductors allows to passage of electricity why because they have free electrons at the out where inside that so inside that term, the outermost electrons are the reason for the move flow of charges of the electrons in the conductor or in the duct system so example metals human and animal bodies and earth are conductors now insulators so insulators sub is a substance which do not have excess electrons and uh, actually they do not have excess electrons so because of that reason they do not allow or they do not allow to pass the flow of charge to them easily such as glass, wood, rubber, etc. A substance which do not allow passive electricity to them easily are called insulators. Another is kind is there in between these two that is called semiconductors and that we are going to see at the end of the syllabus. That's the fourteen topic. Now, now next is charging a body. This can be stored on a body. All the charges can be transferred from one body to another body. So this is here. Charging a body by means storing or transferring the charges from one body to another body. This can be done. There are three methods. Let's check out what are those methods. So first is you can consider in the numbers. Conduction. So the conduction means the charge is transferred from a body already charged body to another uncharged body. Then it is possible by touching it. How? By actual touch. This method after charging both body will get self charge obviously the first body has a, for example it is possessing a positive charge or having a positive a negative charge or positive charge anyone for a moment will consider positive the, those charges will be transferred on the another body which do not have any extra charges so the first body which is charged it will transfer extra charge to the another body which do not have excess charge so what kind of charge are transferred whatever the first charge body is having okay that's why the same charge so before we understand second check out this video next one is charging by friction in this method the both bodies may be charged or may not be charged. For a moment, consider both are not charged, both are uncharged. There are no charge on the two bodies. So, the first body or the second body is rubbed on the another or each other. So, because of this rub, friction is produced and because of friction, the outermost orbit electrons which are very weakly bonded to the nucleus of that respective atoms are transferred to the other body. Now for a moment this is a first body which do not have any charge this is a second body which is also do not have a charge but when you rub each this body this first body will lose its uh, electrons because mostly on a metal or any other body 
the electrons, sorry, the substance electrons are the negative charges. Now, when you rub this both body to each other, the electrons from the first body will be transferred to the second body because the only matter or the particle which is transferable is an electron. Atom cannot be transferred because those are bonded strongly. That's why those are in solid state. But the electrons can be transferred from one body to another body. Because of friction, electrons are transferred from this body to this body. So this body is now having negative charges. And who is lost electron? This body. So that's why it has positive charge. It is now positive charge. Look at here. The two different kind of charges are produced. So this is how friction works. So I will show the video the friction works. Now here is a list of the what types of materials will possess the positive charge and negative charge when they rubbed each other. There are two sections. Here, so this is the second section, this is the first section. From he in this direction if you go, it shows from cotton to paper, aluminum, silk, lead, fur, wool, nylon and human hair, liquor, glass, acetate and other things. These materials, so the, they will gain only positive charge when they are rubbed against the second section material. For example, if you rub glass with the silk wax, the rubber glass will, sorry, the glass will gain positive charge 100% and the sealing wax will get negative charge. This, why this graph is showing, what is the graph meaning, the number of gaining the positive charge or means losing the electrons from this direction in this direction is more. Human hands will lose more electron compared to glass and glass will lose more electrons compared to silk. So this is highest, highest possible positive charge after friction and this is highest possible negative charge material that is silicon rubber. Now another example if you choose a fur and silicon and if you rub each other what will happen silk will lose its electron to silicon now silicon will become negative charge and silk will become positive charge. Now what about the cotton? Cotton may have charge after rubbing with the paper or wool or amber but very less so that's why it is negligible and that's what we have considering zero here. So check out this video of the next video which tells you about the friction. Let's see how the induction works. Consider first as a body which is completely charged with the. I will take a pause. Let's see how the induction works. Consider a body which is completely neutral, which is not charged. 
there are no single free charge. So this I will consider second body. And first body I will consider a negatively charged body. That is the first body. Now these two bodies are not touching each other, they are separate from each other. Now cons now bring this first body to the near closer to the second body, but do not touch it. We are not going to make them to touch or friction. We are not going to produce a friction or rub. There is a separation, there is a gap between these two bodies. Now because of the negative charge on the first body, the positive charge will be attracted toward this end. Because of the this reason, they have positive charge. Now the positive charge particles are gathered together or come to this end because of this negative charge attraction. Now how they become positive charge? Because of losing a negative charge on the other hand, other end. Now check out, four positive charges left four electrons from there. There, is, there were no here. In the first step, there were no charges, but because of this force, the positive charge leaves the negative charge because of this strong attraction, because of closely bonded electrons. Now, the, in the next case, what we are going to do, we are going to connect, we are going to connect a wire to this second body, and we are going to pass to connect to the earth, that is earthing or ground. Now what will happen, this extra charges which are not bonded to anyone will be flown through this wire to the ground. Now what will happen, this extra charges, why it is extra, because these are bonded now without touching, because of unseen force, that is electrostatic. Now what happens? Only these positive charges are left. Now remove this, take away this first body, far away from this. After all the charges, all the charges flown through this earth, remove this body or take back this body, first body. What will happen? Nothing will change to this body because nothing is passed to the second body, only just attraction. Now what happens now? Negative charge is lost by this surface of this body. That who is left now? Only positive charges. So this second body is now charged. What happened? The second body is charged by induction method. This is called induction method. Check out this video.